What's up friends? This is the brand new 14 inch Lenovo Yoga 9i running on Intel's 1260p, the new i7, which I have reviewed one other laptop with the 1260p. It's the ThinkPad Carbon X1 Gen 10. It ran hot and it had poor battery life, particularly compared to the 11th gen Intel processor. So something funky I thought was going on. Since then, other reviews have started to come out about that processor and it uh, looks like I was right. So there's something going on. Hopefully Microsoft and Intel can work together to figure out how to optimize these new CPUs in Windows 11. But as of right now, this is the only other laptop that I've gotten in, in the shop here that has that CPU. And uh, this is a first impressions video, so I can't say anything conclusively quite yet with any level of confidence, but I think we're going to have a similar set of issues with this machine. But this video is a first impressions video that I really want to have focused only on what Lenovo have done, not on Microsoft's, or sorry, Intel's CPU or, or Microsoft's OS and how they may be using that CPU. Okay, this is a very beautiful laptop. Now, I like to spend a little extra money when I buy laptops because I want something that's substantial, right? I want to, I'll pay a little more, 10, 15, 20% sometimes across all things, not just laptops, um, anything consumer tech related. I'm willing to pay a little extra to have a better sort of quality of finish, right? Like I'd prefer the OLED switch to the regular switch or I'll buy, um, you know, I'll buy the MacBook Pro 14, even though all I really need is the 13 because the 14 has a better display. Like I'll do that kind of stuff. And so here, I think Lenovo is in that conversation now where you can look across Lenovo's entire line of consumer laptops. So we'll set the ThinkPads aside for a moment. And now it's not only about value, which I felt for a long time was Lenovo's thing. I think now it's, and innovation, right? They really led the two in one charge, for example. But I think now we can have a conversation about luxury. Right? Like now it's, it's not the Camry, it's the Lexus. I think we have that option now with Lenovo. What they built here is, gosh, it kind of reminds me of like a, an ES350 Lexus from the early 2000s, right? When they had that big redesign and they really stepped up the quality. Listen to me talking about cars. I don't know jack about cars. That's the extent. Okay, so I wouldn't have picked this color personally, but now that I see it in person, I actually really like this two-tone finish that Lenovo have going on here. So at the bottom left, we have the classic Lenovo badge. And at the top right, we have the yoga badge. And now it would have been sweet if this Lenovo badge lit up. I know I'm a gamer, but it doesn't. It still looks really good. I love the font. I love the way it's etched on here. It feels very premium. Now check this out though. Gosh, I really hope guys this comes across well on video. There's this sort of two-tone thing going on. So we have this smooth matte finish on the top and on the bottom, but around the edges, almost like a chrome bumper on a car. Okay, that's the end of the car stuff. You have this really nice, rounded, glossy, chrome-like bumper that just goes around the entire device and on the speaker grill. So more on the speaker grill in a bit. The only thing missing here that I think we'll see in the Yoga 9 series is an etching on the, on the lip where you put your finger to lift up the display. It, if this had just said Yoga 7 on it, and etched on there just like the Yoga logo is, it would have been just moonshot. It would have been unbelievable, but it didn't happen. Now on the right hand side, we've got some IOs. We've got our power button with an LED status indicator. When it pulses white, that just means it's in standby mode. There is a USB-C port. This is not Thunderbolt. And then there's a headphone jack. On the back, we have our speaker grill. I'll give you a tour of that in a bit. And on the left hand side, a full size USB-A. Now you've got yourself power delivery and Thunderbolt and then a standalone Thunderbolt right here as well. There is a reset button if you wanna get into Lenovo settings, there's a reset button tucked away right there on the corner. Sorry, my hands are dirty, I was just fixing stuff around the house and then I got a minute to make this video. Right there you've got this reset button so you put a needle or something, maybe not a needle, you put something small and sharp in there and then boom, you go into a, um, you get to the BIOS. Okay, so this is a two-in-one laptop. But there's more to it than that. So first of all, not quite ready for prime time on the one-handed open. I think that will come with time. You gotta really work the hinge a little bit. Don't do it forcefully, folks, but just give it some time. And I think that will get, that'll ease up. That's based on my experience with Lenovo 2-in-1s and other 2-in-1 devices. Now, 
The keyboard is excellent. I can now say with confidence that across all of Lenovo's consumer laptop line and of course their ThinkPad line, that the keyboards are now fantastic. The Legions are great, these are great, the IdeaPads are great, the ThinkBooks are great. They've done a great job. Massive trackpad, finally on a Lenovo laptop. We have a real big, nice glass trackpad. It doesn't use the funky magnets of, funky but good, magnets on the new Dell SPX 13 Plus or on the MacBook Pro, but it does feel very good. It's just you know, a little bit of getting used to for me because I'm going back and forth between these two right now, pointing at the MacBook. I'll remove these stickers if this were mine, but for now, it's informative. Let's us know it's a two-in-one with a 360, uh, what does it say, rotating sound bar. And this is a OLED display that runs at 90 Hertz. Okay, and I'll talk about that here in a second. As a two-in-one device with a rotating speaker, you get a better two-in-one experience than I've seen on any other laptop. This isn't brand new for Lenovo. They've been doing the rotating speaker since 2020, but it just means that the speaker is just always facing you, whether you're in laptop mode or you're in tent mode or you're in tablet mode. Now, I'm pretty confident this is a 16 by nine display. I haven't done the math yet, but it looks like it is. And as a result, we have some serious forehead and chin going on. So this is technically the chin. Let me just turn it around so we don't get confused. So here's your chin. Come on, give me some display. Bah, do it this way then. There we go. Okay, so you have you have the bezel itself, then you have this black bar chin. Now on the forehead, where it's the Windows Hello is housed, which is great, you have another pretty big set of black space, right? This will never be display, guys. This is just, you know, it's not display. And then we have a border on the right and left-hand side that aren't horrible, but this isn't a 16 by, I'm pretty darn sure it's not a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And this new design language on the top is kind of what Lenovo's brought to the table for 2022. I'd imagine we'll see it for at least another year. I'm not a massive fan. I think it's too much non-display wrapped around the display. So there's just a lot going on there, but it is a two in one. So it's helpful to have space for your fingers when you want to do the rotating if you're even going to do the rotating. Some people will buy these laptops because they're available, but they don't actually use them in that regard. Whereas you know, for Lenovo, they don't offer a whole lot. I mean, they have the whole idea pad line, but you don't really find those in stores, which is not cool because they're really good computers. Okay, enough of the go to market conversation. This is an OLED display. The quality of it is not gonna come across in this video. This I think is the same panel that's in last year's uh, Lenovo IdeaPad Carbon 7i Slim Pro. Not kidding, pretty sure that's the exact title. Maybe it's got the words flipped around. Massive title. It's available at Costco, or at least it was for a long time. MSRP was like 1500 bucks, and Costco had it down to I think $900 for Christmas. It was a steal, great laptop. Did the review here on the, on the channel, but um, I think it's the exact same display, which is a bit of a letdown. So here's what we got, okay. On paper, OLED, 90 Hertz, it's like unbelievable. Here we go, finally, we're gonna have something smooth, you know, like the ProMotion on the MacBook Pro 14 and 16, or um, maybe something as nice as 120 Hertz, three millisecond response time on the Zephyrus G14. Not exactly. So, there isn't much of a difference between 60 and 90 Hertz on this display. Same is true, as I mentioned, on last year's long title laptop, but it, it is there. So if you can tell a difference, then cheers, right? So you can go to the display settings. What I like to do is just grab a window and sort of move it at a reasonable speed and see if my eyes can tell a difference. Right now it's at 90, it won't come across in the video. I don't see much of a difference, but it will affect your battery life. So if you wanna be cautious of battery life, keep it at 60 Hertz, which was the default setting for me when I got this from Lenovo and maybe that's for a reason. Okay, now it is 2880 by 1800, so it's very sharp. It's, it's a great resolution for a 14 inch display, maybe a little on the overkill side, but I'm fine with that. And the OLED portion itself looks very, very, very good. So even with the black borders, the blacks blend in. Now, if I look very carefully at this particular image, I can see the, distant, the difference, but if my eyes are locked in on the center of the screen, I'm looking at these colors or I'm moving around, 
I don't notice it. It just sort of blends in, which is the, a sign of a really good OLED display as, as far as the color representation goes. Now, I've done a little bit of testing, but this, again, not a full review. I haven't put it through its like complete paces, right? I haven't tested the hard drive or the SSD speeds. I haven't tested uh, how quickly it can browse the web or anything like that or battery life. But so far, initial impressions have been good. Like as you can see here, opening Word was very fast, despite the fact that I don't have a license, apparently. I thought I did, maybe I just haven't logged in yet. So I think we're going to get good performance out of this, which was not the problem with the ThinkPad, uh, the Gen 10. The problem was that this thing ran, that that thing ran hot and it ran with poor battery life. So we'll see. The jury's out, I'll do a full review on this for sure and get you battery life numbers. One thing I can tell you, something that I observed is that when I got this from Lenovo, it was already pre-configured, right? Lenovo puts a user account on there and everything, but I don't, you know, I like to use my own user account. It's got all my settings, got all my bookmarks and stuff like that. I can run my tests and get up and running faster. So the thing that I noticed though, is that as I was creating that user account and then I logged out of the Lenovo one and logged into mine and then I started configuring Windows, the fans started to spin up. Now they weren't horribly loud, but they were noticeable, maybe 44 decibels, 45 decibels, something like that. I said 44 to sound super observant, you know, mid forties, which isn't the end of the world, but all I was doing was switch. I was just, I just logged out and logged back in. Like I know Windows has to like instantiate a bunch of services, but it's not like I did a full restart, you know? So it's a little bit surprising that the laptop took that turn. So I've got some concerns there, but um, the jury's out until I've done a full review. Also, it's possible that Windows and, sorry, Microsoft and Intel can work together to figure something out. But as of right now, I'm very impressed with the build on this laptop. It's just, it's really, really gorgeous, guys. I don't know a better way to put it. You get the backlit keys, it, and, and that's hard to cut across on video too, but it looks really good. It's a nice, subtle backlight, just like you find on the MacBooks. It's automatic. I didn't have to touch a thing, just that's how it worked. And I appreciate that. There's a fingerprint reader. You got Windows Hello. Overall, a nice clean package. I think Lenovo's got a winner here. So I'll run the full battery of tests. It might be a few weeks before this posts, but I'll get it out to you guys as soon as possible. So thank you for watching. Let me know what questions you have. Try to get to me soon so I can incorporate any type of specific tests into my final review. And I'll get a full review up as soon as I can. Cheers.